Hi everyone, so in this video we're going to talk about some of the common instruments in jazz and we're going to focus uh, in particular on the wind instruments that you know usually make up what, what's called the front line uh, in the jazz band. So you know we're not going to discount uh, the instruments of the rhythm section, we will talk about those, but I find that um, you know people can recognize those fairly readily, you know instruments such as piano or guitar or banjo, uh, bass or drums. But sometimes determining, you know, what kind of sound we're hearing uh, in the front line or the melody section of the, the uh, jazz band, you know, sometimes it takes a little bit of, uh, of deep listening. And uh, so we're going to start off today um, by trying to, uh, you know, by listening to some of the different instruments and, uh, you know, try to figure out what makes them sound the way that they sound. So we're starting here with the brass family. And uh, this, there's basically four main instruments in the brass family. We have trumpet. Uh, we're actually going to hear another instrument called a cornet, which is very similar uh, to the trumpet. Uh, then over here we have the trombone. So you heard me play the trombone in my improvisation uh, video. Uh, let's start here with the trumpet. So the trumpet um, is, you know, sort of the uh, highest pitch instrument of all these instruments that you see here on the screen and in the front line uh, this instrument because it's very sort of bold and brash and uh, you know very loud it's the one that would actually carry the melody uh, in in the early jazz band so let's uh, listen to an example of some trumpet playing here let's check this out So you notice that that instrument is, you know, it's pretty loud, it's pretty high pitched. Um, you know, once again, that's one of the reasons that it's, uh, um, you know, the main melody in early jazz. Oh, incidentally, so the, the, all of the instruments in the brass family, uh, not, you know, they don't necessarily go there because they have this sort of brass color, um, but they all have the one thing in common that they have this mouthpiece where you use your lips to create the sound by buzzing them. And then, you know, it kind of goes through all the tubing and then we have this bell that amplifies the sound. So, you know, there's, you know, these three instruments here, uh, they all change the pitch of the sound via valves. The trombone uh, changes the pitch of the sound by moving the slide around. So here, let's listen to an example of a trombone. <laughs> Okay, so you may have noticed that the trombonist uh, on that recording, you know, went up pretty high in the register and then ended up the recording uh, playing very, very low uh, pitches. And those, those were called um, pedal tones. Uh, and those represent what are called the fundamental pitches uh, of that particular instrument. So that instrument, you know, gets around pretty well. Um, we're not going to listen to the other two instruments um, because, well, for a couple of reasons. First of all, um, the French horn, the one in the middle here, uh, we don't really hear that's not a very common uh, instrument in jazz. Uh, however, we do hear that, we start to hear that instrument a little bit in uh, the late 40s when um, there's a genre of jazz called cool jazz uh, that starts to, to emerge. Um, the tuba over here um, is the one that usually carries the bass line. Um, but in, in early jazz, we actually see um, a different kind of tuba this one called a sousaphone and you may notice there with the sousaphone um, there's a sort of a hole in the middle of it uh, where you can actually put put it over your head and you rest it on your shoulder so you can march around with it um, you know marching music was very very popular uh, at the end of the 1800s and that's one of the musics that we're going to study and look at um, that helped to um, influence the creation of jazz um, as a matter of fact, that is uh, the name of the sousaphone is named after John Philip Sousa, who was uh, probably the most famous composer and band leader of uh, marching band music. Um, so those are the two brass instruments you have to know, or trumpet and trombone. Um, the next one that we're going to look at uh, is actually we're going to go to the woodwind family. 
uh, we're going to start with the saxophones. Now, woodwinds are called woodwinds um, because they have uh, a piece of cane or wood that gets strapped to the mouthpiece with a thing called a ligature, ligature excuse me. Um, and the, the sound of that instrument is created by making that particular uh, cane uh, vibrate. So you blow into the mouthpiece and the cane vibrates and then the rest of the instrument um, amplifies the sound. So we're going to start with saxophones. Now saxophones um, actually were not very prevalent in early jazz. Uh, they started to come up in the 20s. Um, actually starting with, believe it or not, the one here on the left, which is called the soprano saxophone. Um, that's the one we saw Kenny G playing uh, in our first class. Um, but uh, it, it was actually popularized by a guy uh, named Sidney Bechet, who uh, started off playing clarinet. We're going to study Sidney a little bit later. And, but he liked the way that the soprano sax was a little bit louder instrument than the clarinet. Um, and, you know, it helped him kind of get his melody out, out into the open. Alto sax is the maybe next lowest pitched, uh, popularized uh, by people like uh, Charlie Parker. Uh, tenor sax here, we're going to hear people uh, like Coleman Hawkins and Lester Young playing the tenor saxophone. And then over here, the big one in the saxophone family is called the baritone sax. Now, actually, there are saxophones on either side of this family. There's a bass saxophone, contrabass saxophone, uh, which are very, very low pitched. There's actually also a sopranino and a soprillo, uh, which are on this side, maybe even higher saxophones. But these are the four, uh, you know, main saxophones that we listen to. And let's listen to a couple of them now. We're going to start over here on the right with the baritone sax, uh, which is a very low pitched saxophone. Let's listen to that. <laughs> that you know occupies the sort of lower pitches uh, in the saxophone family it does have a nice sound to it though it's got this sort of uh, um, I don't know how to describe it this this sort of like wide sound to it um, let's uh, compare that with the tenor saxophone here's the tenor saxophone <laughs> So kind of similar, but you know the timbre is a little bit lighter than that baritone saxophone. Um, let's go to the alto saxophone. So the timbres are getting lighter and lighter, aren't they? Let's go to soprano. Right, almost kind of has that sort of like snake charmer sort of quality to it. Uh, let's let's go through the different ones again. Let's see if I can find my berry. to recognize those uh, different saxophones, but it's your job to be able to do that. So I did provide all of these recordings on Canvas. Uh, so you can study this video, you can study the recordings themselves on Canvas, um, but you're gonna have to know them and you're gonna have to know them for the first uh, listening quiz that we have. So uh, you guys need to get to that. Um, we got one more here, the clarinet. Uh, let's check out how the clarinet sounds. a similar range and sound to the soprano saxophone but uh, much more sort of woody as a matter of fact clarinets 
uh, good clarinets are generally made of wood, um, or uh, you know some of the other uh, versions of the clarinet are made of plastic. Um, and they also have a little bit wider range than the soprano sax. They tend to go a little bit lower in tessitura. But the clarinet was super, super important um, in early jazz. The front line in early jazz was generally trumpet, trombone, and clarinet. And they all had their uh, different ro roles in that front line. And we're going to discuss that when we get to uh, early jazz. So uh, study all of the sounds of these instruments starting today. And uh, make sure you got that together for our quiz that's coming up. All right, see you later.